when our first original Mystery of the Sphinx NBC special, Emmy award-winning special, hosted by Charlton Heston came out back in 93, it started a firestorm of controversy among the academic community, specifically the Egyptologists, archeologists, and anthropologists. And the reason was that it upset the whole notion of what is accepted as ancient Egyptian history. Back when you say the Sphinx was carved, it was all hunter-gatherers, and how could hunter-gatherers have carved the most spectacular sculpture on the face of the earth? We needed a smoking gun, a smoking gun that would settle the argument once and for all. We now have that smoking gun. The skeptic said, show me a pot shard. Well, we don't have a pot shard to this day. What we do have is a tremendous, huge ceremonial site built of immense blocks of stone that they date to 10,000 BC and earlier. Gobekli Tepe completely scuttles everything that anyone has ever learned in school about the onset and the origins of civilization itself. Whoever built Gobekli Tepe back in 10,000 and more, 10,000 and earlier BC, uh, had a technology in place that allowed them to wrestle around 12-ton blocks of stone. So they may have been wearing bear skins and sitting around the campfire, but they were by no means primitive. Naturally, the geology doesn't lie. Uh, we will be taking our audience to some of the most mysterious and spectacular places on the face of the planet, where there is evidence of this once global but now lost civilization. We'll be going to Turkey. That's our smoking gun. The Easter Island, where they have a script called the Rongo Rongo uh, that has never been deciphered and no one knows what, it's, what it means, but Dr. Robert Chalk has a theory that the script contains clues to the tremendous cataclysmic event, a coronal mass ejection back in 9700 BC that in fact decimated that ancient global civilization that we're postulating. We'll be going to Indonesia, a site called Gunung Padang, built of massive basalt blocks. They are laid horizontally, and the only way they can get horizontal is if they're placed that way by human beings. In our Church of Progress era, everything is compartmentalized. The scientists can't talk to the artists. The artists can't talk to the philosophers. The philosophers can't talk to the priesthood, and nobody can talk to each other. Ancient Egypt was exactly the opposite. Here was a civilization in which art, science, philosophy, and religion were fused into one inextricable whole. And what we're looking for now is the funding to put together a sequel that nails it down once and for all and that has momentous implications really for every human being on the face of the earth. Zeptepi is the name for the, our intended sequel. Zeptepi in ancient Egyptian means the first time. And what that means is the first cosmological time, the first time time is created. And it also means the time when civilization first began. In other words, Zeptepi is the first time that there is time. What we will do with Zeptepi is to show not just its origins in Egypt, but all around the world, other places that date from that what is effectively a lost civilization. And we'll be getting into why this civilization went down finally. Why couldn't it just keep going? Who's the audience for Zeptepi, the origins of civilization? Actually, it's not the professors in the universities. It's everybody. When the mystery of the Sphinx first went out, what everybody was enthused about was watching the orthodox academic establishment get its nose rubbed in the dirt. Something much deeper resonated that something spiritual underlies um, any civilization worthy of that name. Victor Hugo said there's only one thing stronger than all the armies in the world, and that's an idea whose time has come. We believe that the almost the only possibility of salvaging our civilization, and perhaps even our planet, is to understand the level of sophistication of the civilizations of the very distant past. The information in this film is such that it will change the way that humanity looks upon itself.